All right, I'm gonna try to find a way to get Banjo onto that Banjo-only switch on the Coliseum Arches. Oh, little trick there. Yeah, how, how the game expects you to do that as Banjo without the magical pack whack ability is beyond me. So that's where the train switch was, so... We can jump onto here from above. There we go. Yeah, probably not the intended way, but that's what we're gonna do. So we push that switch. That opens up the- okay, okay. So now we're gonna need to get Kazooie onto the flight pad. Or alternatively, can we just glide now? I don't think we can glide. Alright, Mr. Dragon, please don't roast my goose. I know it's what tickers do best, but... Solo Kazooie Flight Pack. Okay, that's not where we need to go. Don't be rude. Also, the terrible thing is that, uh... At any point if we die, then we have to reset this entire switch progress. Okay, so that opens it up all the way. So now that'll remain forever open, which is great. That opens it up a banjo-only gate over there. Great. Wait, I see that grippable edge. Okay, I think the hardest part is just finding that first switch is banjo. Now, I I just jumped from above, but that kind of requires the pack whack jump glitch. Does that open up? Oh! Was it that simple? Okay. I'll take it. There we go! Alright, I've never gotten that one before. The key is to hit that ba that first banjo switch from high up. Also, there's a Jinjo behind a lava fall over here. Okay, really? Take a chill pill, bro. It's not just your volcano. This looks like a job again for Super Pack Whack Banjo Jump. All right, now I believe what we do is we shack pack, and we can jump through the- no, that's not how we do it. Okay. Shack pack does not work against that. Maybe maybe it's just Wonder Wayne and vulnerability. Guess what, jumping into scalding hot lava flowing down is actually kind of painful. And even if you're inside a backpack, you're gonna feel it. <laughs> Go figure, I can't believe it. Yeah, okay. Oh yeah, you literally just wonder. And there's the upper brown Jinjo. The brown Jinjo family is complete! They'd like you to have this. Oh, we are at the edge of the world right now. We gotta get to the train station. Yeah, the train station is fairly high up, so I guess we're gonna fly the back towards it. Now that we've opened up the fiery side train station, we should be able to uh, do some good things. Actually, we've opened up both train, train stations. So the icy side train station is actually not connected to anything in the icy side. There's a there's a uh, ice wall in the way that you can't get past, so we literally are going to have to take the train to the icy station. Which sounds pretty simple, except, well, as you're going to find out, it's not as simple as you might think. 
Alright. This right here, I believe, is the entrance to the train station. Indeed it is. Alright. We're gonna call Chuffy here, and then we're gonna ride Chuffy to the icy side. Chuffy is on freight service to Grunty Industries. Would you like Chuffy to pick you up? Yes, please. You're kind of weird, but okay. Here we go. Lobside train station. Those train tracks are barely intact, and Chuffy is very close to taking a very nasty one-way bath into the lava. But thankfully, Chuffy is an inanimate train, and Old King Cole is a good up there. And Old King Cole actually likes the heat. Let's go! Select the destination. Okay, Glitter Ghost Mine, Witchy World, Iowa Hags, Pterodactyl Land, Grunty Industries. We're gonna go back to Hailfire Peaks, the icy side. Sorry, but I can't go there. The sudden drop in temperatures would crack my boiler, and it would be sur curtains for me. However, if you can find a way to cool my boiler a little. Yeah, so we actually can't go to the icy side train station yet because it's too drastic of a drop in temperature. And before you wonder, oh, let's just go take the train somewhere else that's not the lava train station and then take it to the icy side. No, it's too drastic of a drop of temperature regardless of which place you're in. So, what we actually have to do is utilize something in this world in order to cool Chuffy down. Now, remember what that signpost in the volcano said. When you need to make things cool, remember your bearded buddy. Yeah, Gobi's here, and unfortunately we have to abuse him again. Now remember that one way we could... That guy is desperately trying to kill me. Actually, no, let him. Let him. Take me back to the beginning of the world. That's actually a shortcut to the flight pad. There's that one room that we could enter from high up. Oh no, it doesn't, because... Apparently, board just getting on the train and leaving is apparently a warp point. Great. Great. Are we close to the, at least the other warp pad? There's the other warp pad. All right. No! No, you son of a gun! Yeah, it's so annoying. If you get hit... Because the lava... Apparently, touching the lava and then making you jump up in pain doesn't actually cut the fall height. As soon as you fall out from after that, then you take the fall damage. My A button is not being very responsive today. I don't even remember exactly where the entrance to the other part of the train station is. I think it's actually fairly far away. I know it's very high up, though. Okay, I remember now. It's right at the top of the, uh... Right at the top of the Coliseum, which makes sense, because the train station is at the top of the Coliseum itself. Here we go. Gobi, I'm really sorry to do this, but the game gives me literally no choice. Please! Not my precious water! Again! I'm sorry! Oh no! It took me since the last game to save that! Ah! Yes! That seems to have cooled my boiler enough! I'll let you take the chuffing train to the icy side now. Ouch! Zero out of ten. This world is too much lava. I still love every world in this game, but this is my least favorite world in the game. By kind of a lot. It's just such a pain in the neck to navigate across the lava side. Even if the icy side is a lot better. Anyhow, we're going to go to the icy side. Ooh, 
How nice and cool. There we go. Chuffy's boiler doesn't crack. This has been an exciting episode of Thomas the Tank Engine and Friends. So there's not really much here, because again, it's closed off from all the rest of the world. But there is still some stuff here. We can climb up this broken piece of track. There's a mean Joe here. He's very, very mean. This takes us to a dead end in the uh, just the generic icy side, but this is where a jiggy is. So we now actually have eight of the ten jiggies in this world. We were stuck at two for a very long time. But then the rest of these are all just kind of coming into play all at the same time. Now, there's actually water here. Does this lead anywhere? Wow, I'm so actually surprised that we don't take damage from this. Kind of surprising to me. Also, fun fact, this is these are now the final Chuffy uh, train stations. We now have every train station in the game unlocked. The World 8 and then the final world don't have Chuffy stations. Which, it, it makes sense, why not? So, <laughs> well, you'll just have to see once we get there. Anyhow. Thanks, Chuffy. Thanks, Old King Cole. I like how Old King Cole is kind of like our bro now. Now that we've beaten him. Even though we've literally, like, blasted him to a million pieces. I mean, he's a sentient pile of coal, so I guess he can't really die. Alright, before we do the last part, there are... Actually, no, you know what? We are- we only have one thing left to do on the fiery side now, and we need to use- we literally need the flight pad. It's the main thing you need the flight pad for. Also, wow, the, the slowdown. Geronimo! Youch! Also, we might need a health refill. Actually, I'm making the executive decision. We're getting a health refill first. And we're going to do that by using, uh, using the split-up pads and the snooze pack. There we go. All right, now that we have the flight pad, there's something extremely high up that you can only reach using the flight pad. It's up here. There's another flight pad here, but yeah, it's so high up you need a flight pad to enter it. Let's see what lies up here. Just, I'm gonna say, preemptively get out your ice eggs. You're gonna need them. Because it's boss time. Chili Billy, the hot and spicy dragon. Ah, uh, at last. You must be the pizza delivery boy. No, just the local Jiggy Hunters. Lies! I bet you've got my 12-foot spicy meat special in that backpack. Afraid not, Wartface. Then I'll eat you instead. Alright, so now we get to fight Chili Billy the Dragon. He's not too hard of a fight. We can utilize these cannons to fire giant ice eggs at him. Brr. So cold! I'll soon have you licked! So now he's gonna try to lick us with that ton of his. We can just jump on over it. Yeah, this is a really cool fight. We, we utilize these cannons to, sh like, magnify the power of our ice legs. You've been causing me so much pro- so many problems on this level, buddy. That. 
He's a very simple fight, though. He looks intimidating and he's got epic music. But he's a very simple fight. But now he's getting better with his aiming. He's actually going to try to lead his shots. Or we can just go to the next cannon. The cannons also provide cover from his attacks. And, yeah, he's, he's defeated already. <laughs> Pretty easy fight, that. Enough! I've changed my mind. Forget the pizza, but I'm sure my brother will still want his. Hmm. <laughs> I reckon I'll go get a couple of Big Al burgers. <laughs> Continuity. I love how he's like this giant dragon. He's got a big head and then a giant neck, but he's actually really tiny. It's just like a giraffe. Also, we don't actually get a... Uh, we don't get a Jiggy for beating him. Yeah, so there are actually, as you probably have guessed, there are two bosses on this course. You have to fight both of the dragons. And whichever one you fight first will be pretty darn easy. And whichever one you fight second is going to be a heck of a lot harder. <laughs> I generally do the ice dragon second. And again, I recommend beating the dragon on the fiery side as soon as possible. Like, as soon as you get that flight pad. Because now that he's defeated, he will not shoot fireballs at us anymore. Which is really, really nice. Really nice. And again, when, when you do it on the icy side as well, he will also stop spitting the ice balls at you. You have to defeat both of the bosses in order to get the jiggy for the level. Alright, before we... Okay, so, a couple things. So, we need the Jiggy for the bosses. There's also this Jiggy here. We can't reach that Jiggy right now. I guess we technically can, but we'll have to leave the world and do stuff in a previous world. So, literally all we have left to do is defeat the other boss, the Ice Dragon. However, there are also two other things. There's the Cheeto Page in the Ice Cold Grotto, which I had to look up how to get and now I know. And there's also the Jinjo near the, uh, Gust of Wind. Now, I thought there was a way to get, go around and, like, get into the Gust of Wind and it'll blow you into the Jinjo. Not the case. Apparently, the game wants you to use the maximum size snowball to get past it, except I tried that and it didn't work. So, we're gonna use a clock, okay? As soon as Mr. Icy Boy stops trying to kill us. Alright. Clockwork egg, um... Clockwork Egg got stuck, apparently. Wow, it, it was like it was getting blown. Buddy, just back off. This is not a fight you're gonna win. Did you just see what I did to your friend? You, you don't want to mess with me. Ouch. Clockwork Egg does work. There we go. The Orange Jinjo family is complete! They'd like you to have this! Like, I'll have to look back at the footage. Maybe I didn't have the maximum size snowball, but I swear I had the maximum size snowball and it still blew me away. Maybe I was missing like one HP or something. Anyhow. Next thing we have to do is go back to the Icicle Grotto, because I now know I, I was right. In the Icicle Grotto, there is a tiny little thing you fire a clockwork egg into, and then you can reach that Geo page. But it was in the one place I didn't think to look, basically. So. We could just take the warp into the Icicle Grot. Yeah, we're not going to do that. Alright, so back in that first room, there's something that you can climb that it doesn't look like you can climb. Actually, I guess you can... Yeah, that's actually kind of obvious. Yeah, you can climb up this green stalactite. Then there's a tiny little thing over here. You can also use Banjo Shack Pack to go through here, but Clockwork Egg works just fine. This takes us to the end with the Cheeto Page. And we have enough Cheeto Pages to get our next cheat. Anyhow, how much HP do we have? Also, get out the Fire Eggs, because you're going to need the Fire Eggs for the Icy Dragon. It's largely the same play, just a little trickier. How's our HP level, though? If our HP level is low, I'm gonna need to boost it. Buddy, just give me- Why do these yetis not have any honey on them? 
Maybe they already ate it all. Alright. Snooze pack, get us up to full HP. Oh, wow, the, the lag. <laughs> Took twice as long. Alright, so in case you didn't in case you hadn't guessed, uh, the way to get to the icy dragon is we need to clock clamber boots all the way up and actually enter that cave that I was up there where I'm like, I'm saving this for last. Yeah, that leads to the second boss fight. And again, the icy dragon is not is gonna be a lot harder than the fire dragon for me because I fought the fire dragon first. But if you fight the icy dragon first, he'll be just as easy as the fiery dragon was for me. Hope that makes sense. The one you fight first will be easier, and the one you fight second will be tougher. There we go. Alright, here we are at the top of the glacier. Here we go. Chilly Willy, the cold and icy dragon. You must be the pizza delivery boy that beat up my poor brother. He tried to eat us. I suppose you'll be wanting pizza too. Yes, please. I ordered an anchovy deluxe. Well, tough. We've got none. I'm sure you have. Give me my pizza. <laughs> so, um, whichever dragon you fight second is going to be that harder. Uh, he has twice the HP, his projectile attacks are way faster. Let me have just a little taste. And his ton attack is going to be a lot crazier, too. We can, again, just jump over it fairly easily. But his his ice ball attack you saw was coming at me really, really fast. And again, he leads his shots, so it's a lot tougher to avoid. And we're going to have to use the cannons all three times. Each cannon can be used up to three times, and we're going to have to use all of them to their maximum possible effect in order to get through this fight. Getting across the gaps while avoiding his ton is rather annoying. Also, yes, his ton does damage you. I love the idea of, like, oh, it's these... the fire dragon and the ice dragon that are causing the chaos, and really, they literally just want pizza. And they think you're the pizza delivery guy, and that's why. Also, anchovy deluxe? You picked, like, one of the worst pizzas. I'm not going to say the worst. His worse is a much is a very deep hole, as a wise man once said. Alright, there we go. He's halfway done. He's still not as hard. Like, he's definitely not as tough as Weldar is, whichever dragon you fight second, but definitely one of the tougher bosses in the game. Epic music, though. Yeah, I'd still say Weldar is the toughest of the regular bosses by a good bit. I also put Mr. Patch, the Lord Wolf back back, and honestly, Target Sand up there as well. Target Sand, if you don't know how to strafe, is really difficult. Which, I guess what, I didn't know how to strafe for the first couple of playthroughs of this game. Ouch. Wow, he hit me with his turn of that. Still alive! Take that. A lot of people consider the dragons to both be really easy. Again, I still consider the second dragon to be a pretty tough fight. First dragon is really easy, though. I agree. As long as you, once you know how to lead his shots, he's not as difficult. There we go. Stop it! I don't want pizza anymore. I'll go and get a takeout instead. Hold on, you frosty fool. We've beaten both of you now, so I reckon we should get a trophy. A trophy, eh? How about this? Also, I like how you can see the other volcano from this one, and vice versa. Now, which way is it to the fly through McJiggies? <laughs> they both just wanted their fast food. I mean, you shouldn't try to kill people for fast food, but there you go. 
Alright, and that is the final Jiggy we can get right here in Hailfire Peaks. Uh-oh, 66 Jiggy. That's not good. That's a bad number. Anyhow, yeah, we're missing one Jiggy and we got everything else. And we can get the Jiggy by backtracking to a previous world and taking a link to this world. And that's how we get it. Alright, that's it for Hailfire Peaks. Alright, we got the hardest world out of the way now. Thanks for watching, everybody. Next time, we will be getting the new Cheeto Code. And we will be going to World 8. And World 8, for the most part, is way easier than this world. And definitely easier than Grunty Industries. But there are a small handful of things there that are just incredibly difficult. So, yeah. We'll be doing that next time. Hope you enjoyed this beautiful world. Because I I do enjoy this world. I still like the world, even though I complain about it a lot. And I think it's definitely the toughest world in the game. It just... I feel like it's not as fun as the other worlds, even if the design is fantastic. Anyhow, World 8 is absolutely bonkers, so wait till you see it. It's gonna be great. So, that's it for today. Thanks for watching, everybody. Tune in next time. It's gonna be a lot of fun. Until we meet again, my friends, have a great day, and God bless. Huh.